After you found out your personality type in MBTI, your 16 personalities type code, you might be asking yourself, who is the ideal partner for me? And in today's video, I'm going to show you that most likely your ideal match is somebody with a fairly similar type to your own. Okay, so I reviewed the science on dating and long-term relationships and I've looked over multiple studies and there is a pretty overwhelming conclusion to be drawn from looking at data on people that stay together for a longer amount of time and what we are seeing is opposites don't really seem to attract. So the general idea that, for example, an ENFP should date an ISTJ or that an ISTP should date an ENFJ or that an INFP should date an ESTJ, this idea is generally unsupported by science. It's not to say that individual examples don't exist and that these relationships can't be really beneficial for various reasons, but it's to say that in terms of statistics and general commonalities, most people tend to prefer to date somebody that is relatively similar to themselves. And uh, there are many reasons for this. The first is communication. It's much easier to communicate with and understand a person that is similar to yourself. Often when we date and talk to people that have different types to us, it's very common to experience a lot of misunderstandings. Often, because they are different from us, we might assume that they are being selfish or that they are being rude or that they're being mean or that they're doing something that we don't like or that shouldn't be done or that's inadequate or immoral, when in reality they're just being themselves, right? And sometimes it can be that because we have a certain personality, we tend to talk in a certain way, using certain word choices and using a certain structure and format. And when we talk to people that have different personalities from us, we'll often find that they talk differently than how we talk, which means that a lot of the time they will have a different structure, syntax, and way of explaining their thought process. And in this, there's a lot of room for misunderstandings, especially if you're not familiar with the MBTI, right? So the general idea is, if you don't know the MBTI, and if you're not aware of personality psychology, and if you haven't learned how to talk to people that are of a different personality type, you'll more often prefer to talk and connect with people that are and act and function in a way that's similar to yourself, because you'll have an easier time talking with them and you'll make yourself more easily understood by them. But there are other factors too. Having a shared common background is similar, is important. Because often when we come from a similar background, we can talk and we can understand where the other person is coming from. Intuitively, we know that, yeah, like me, they had to go through something difficult or like me, they had experienced this. And because of that, they understand what I feel or what I say. On top of that, sharing common goals tends to be quite important in a sense that if we have a certain lifestyle that we like to live and uh, we date a person that doesn't like or value that kind of lifestyle, that can present us with a lot of very tough compromises, right? Like say you love to travel and to go to new places and say your partner prefers to be at home. Now, how do you resolve something like that? Is it going to be, you know, well, I stop traveling, I'll give it up for him because he doesn't want to do it. Or will it be, he'll have to suck it up and come with me, you know? And this is also something that's important to mention. When we date somebody, we tend to become more and more like them over time, which means that if you date somebody that's a little bit different to you in some regard, a lot of the time, one of you or both of you will move more closely towards one another, right? So what will happen is uh, if you like to travel and they don't like to travel, most likely you'll start to enjoy traveling a little bit more, a little bit less, and they'll start to enjoy it a little bit more because they enjoy doing it with you, right? So a lot of the time relationships also change us, which means that over time, if we are different personalities, well, over the years, we'll start to be a little bit more like one another and to think a little bit more like one another because we start to share a lot of common experiences. We've been through more and more similar things. We've, uh, you know, got to experience it from the other person's point of view and we got to share a connection and relationships are transformative in their nature, meaning they change us and who we are. 
Now in MBTI, it's common to present these kinds of tables which present, you know, the ideal partner or pairing, right? And here, for example, a lot of the time people will match up uh, mirror types. And so mirror types are, for example, the ISFJ and the ESFP or the ISTP and the ESTJ. This is kind of a mix of both kinds of ideas. Here the idea is that you should date somebody that has similar values to you. So an ST should date an ST, an NF should date an NF, right? But, and this is also very important, you should date somebody that has a different temperament to you, right? So if you are a person that is very extroverted and a person that's very organized, you should go for a person that is more messy and more adaptable, and you should go for somebody that is a little bit more calm because this will help you balance out. So the idea is, this is the ideal pairing because it's a growth pairing, right? So the general idea is because they are different than you in temperament, they'll push you to do things in a different way and they'll help you reach your goals and values in another way than what you thought, right? So uh, it's also something that's commonly presented for balance, right? So. If we have, for example, a girl that's super extroverted, a lot of the time she'll be matched up with a guy that's very quiet and very like um, calm in a sense, because the idea is, or the hope is, you know, we want them to kind of talk to each other. So we hope that the guy will become more outgoing and we hope that the girl will become more quiet <laughs> as a result of this kind of interaction and relationship. Now, with the growth pairing, it should be said that this is just one way to approach it, right? Like, there is something to be said about people dating people that are similar to themselves. So if you're an ENFP, going for an ENFP or an ENTP or an INFP, right? Like, what's good about these kinds of constellations and finding people that are similar to you is, well, recognizing that, well, because we function in a similar way, have similar temperaments, have similar values, we can learn from one another and we can share in our struggles and in our difficulties and if they have a problem and if I have a problem, you know, we can figure it out together, right? Like in here also it comes from, you know, uh, say you're very passionate about language and extroverted intuition and you're a person that loves to learn, right? And that's what you want to do. You want to spend the rest of your life learning. And that's what you love to do more than anything else, right? New languages, new places, new cultures, travel, exploration, discovering new things, right? But of course, on top of that, you want to share that with your partner. You want to talk to them about it. All the cool things that you found and discovered, of course. And if they found something, of course, you're going to be fascinated with that. And it's going to be so cool. Wow. You all, uh, you were, that's really interesting. Can you tell me more about that? I, you know, like... Uh, and this is the thing that, the, um, you know, is so key here, right? And now the question can come, you know, why are, uh, why are we intuitively trained to think that opposites are the best? Well, scientifically, the data says similarities are better, right? Why do we tend to have this kind of assumption? Well, I think a uh, reason for this has to do with... Uh, how we look at ourselves, right? And I think if we don't necessarily like ourselves and who we are, right? If we think, oh, I'm too enthusiastic, I'm too, you know, shady, I'm too much uh, of this, like, or I'm too warm or too open with my feelings or so on, right? Or I'm too logical, right? Like if we have these negative judgments about ourselves as too much, as not good enough, you know? The idea of an opposite is quite tempting, right? Because here you can have the general idea that, well, maybe they can fix me, right? Maybe they can, you know, help me. Maybe they can solve my problems. Maybe they can make me stop being this way, right? And that's the general hope and idea here, right? So often when we date the person that's similar to us, we're kind of forced to kind of reconcile and rekindle our love for ourselves, right? Because we might in this case, express negative judgments that we have because we meet that person will be like oh they're too much you know they talk too much just like i do right <laughs> yeah that's the common judgment right we start becoming super critical it's common that people are super critical of people that are similar to themselves right because they're like yeah uh that person oh my gosh you know they're so cool they're so logical they're so you know meticulous they obsess over facts and details right like 
And here, you know, we're kind of judging ourselves through them by proxy, right? So because we don't like ourselves, well, we don't like them. And uh, when it comes to dating, it's often said that you kind of have to learn to love yourself before you can love another person. And yeah, there's many reasons for this, right? Because uh, uh, yeah, if another person, for example, expresses love towards us and says something nice to us and we can't accept that because we don't believe it right we can't accept or feel the love so we don't even get the benefit of being in a relationship because we don't want to feel the love or appreciation that the other person wants from us we want to love somebody we want to adore them but we don't want to be loved we don't want to be adored so here in a sense we're setting ourselves up for uh, immediately one-sided relationships right now Another reason I think why the idea of opposites attract uh, is because uh, of the general question of should we seek for flow in a sense of well-being, fulfillment and enjoyment in life or should we seek for balance, right? And there is some studies done on this also in the MBTI, right? So uh, a common thing that I run into when people talk about the opposite relationships is that, you know, we go to the opposite because we're trying to practice our inferior functions, right? So if we have functions or behavioral traits that we struggle with, we go to an opposite because we hope that they will help us with this. But something that's been mentioned is that often there can be a kind of resentment in the Middle Ages when we try to develop this function ourselves, our partner doesn't really let us, right? So it's a struggle here because we go to an opposite because we hope that they will you know, fix all the problems that we have in our lives, that they will help us build up and empower us you know, to build up certain strengths. But if we date an opposite, they can often have our dominant, our dominant function as their inferior and our inferior functions as their dominant functions, right? Which means that uh, they consider this their superpower, which means that when you use that superpower that they have, right? they're gonna be very critical of it, right? Because they're gonna see it as kind of shallow or silly or like undeveloped or unpracticed or unrehearsed. So they're gonna to wanna to help you with it. And they wanna help you with it by taking it away from your plate, right? Here's the inferior function I wanna work at. Oh, sorry, you're not allowed to work at that. I gotta work on that, that's my thing. You know, I am a superhero in this function. This is my thing, you're not supposed to do that, right? Um, so this kind of struggle that can happen in relationships where you date an opposite is this, that you know, they don't allow us to come into their territory and they don't allow us to become balanced people, right? And so the very premise that we have that an opposite will come and you know, they will help us and they will fix you know, our imbalances in ourselves, you know, that kind of goes away. Uh, of course, there are exceptions to this and you know, uh, person that is an opposite can learn to let go and can say, you know, I recognize your effort and I recognize you're just a beginner and I appreciate you for doing it and I'm gonna, you know, allow you to do your thing even if I love to cook and I'm the best cook by far. Uh, if you wanna cook sometimes, you know, I'm gonna smile, I'm gonna appreciate you, I'm gonna compliment you and I'm gonna let you do this thing because I understand it's important to you to become more balanced and I understand why you wanna develop that skill in yourself in your life, right? So when we hit this kind of period, like, of course there are opposites that will appreciate that and will be completely fine with that. Uh, this is just the kind of misunderstanding that you have to work through and resolve together, right? Um, but the general thing tends to be that uh, this is a struggle, right, when you date an opposite. So we go to an opposite because we want to have help developing our inferior and become more balanced, but we're not allowed to do it. So counterintuitively then, Often we get the most opportunity to work on our weaknesses when we're dating somebody similar to ourselves. Because they don't suck, they suck at it, and we suck at it. So we kind of have to figure it out together. We know that none of us are good at this thing, right? None of us, if we are, for example, people that are strong in introverted sensing, are good at change or dealing with change. So we both kind of have to figure it out and work at it and, you know, We'll do our best together and we'll support each other so we know that it's, we hate it and they, we know they hate it. So we just work and do our best together to fix it and resolve it or we you know, uh, get help doing it from an external source, right? Because that's also possible, right? You can find a friend or other people in your life that can help you with this. Uh, so having a partner, partner that's similar to us can also help us in that regard. So yeah. 
Counterintuitively, while the MTI says uh, go for these and these people, and while many experts in MTI say, oh, this type should definitely date this opposite type or this mirror type or this, you know, uh, golden pair, you know, the science itself suggests, uh, yeah, most of the time we tend to date somebody that's at least like 80 or 90% similar to us. And so this does not necessarily mean that you need to date a complete identical, right? The science is not saying you have to be 100% similar for a relationship to work. No, what they're saying is about 80, 90% similar, right? Which means that, uh, for example, uh, dating an INFP as an ENFP or dating an uh, ESTP as an ISTP, completely possible and completely within the realm of possibility. And maybe even better, this, we, the, the year is out, we don't know yet, right? Um, and um, yeah, even an ISTJ or an ESTP or an ISFJ or an ESFP can work. Uh, because, yeah, there's still a chance that because you've had a similar background or experience or upbringing or cultural similarities, that might make up for the fact that you're different people. Because the MBTI is just one dimension, right? The MBTI is a dimension of your personality, but it doesn't necessarily always correlate to, you know, your religious beliefs or your political views or your childhood or other things, right? Like, you can still meet people that have the opposite personnel type of yours that share a similar cultural background and similar language and similar worldview because of their experiences. And so these kinds of relationships can still work really well. So you got to look at it from a bigger picture than just the MBTI. But yeah, in general, still try to find and date somebody similar to you or if they're very different from you, try to have conversations about how you communicate and how you work together and how you see the world to avoid misunderstandings and to make sure that you can build a healthy and happy relationship together.